talk so much, Ty, about all the things that have to do with kids and pediatricians. I think it's really important to understand, you know, that adults are put, being put into this, this pot of mandatory, too. With Healthy People 2020 and with the use of electronic medical records. Okay. I mean, electronic health records came into vogue in around 2010 when, um, the pediatri when all doctors were told, you're going to have to start using these electronic medical records in order to get billed. So we need to have these, you install these in your office. Well, the problem was is how expensive they were. You had to buy a module from the government. If you bought a Medicaid module, it was $43,000 per position, wow. per physician in the practice. Well, if there were four people in the practice, it's 43,000 times four. And the same thing, you had to buy a Medicare module, which was $62,000 per module. So, you know, physicians' offices are small businesses. I mean, where are you ever going to recoup that investment? Like, never. So the government said, not a problem. We'll pay, for, pay, it, we'll pay it for you. And in, ex in exchange for that, you just have to give us all the data. And so each year, starting in 2010, which, of course, was when Obamacare came into be, by 2012, they installed more than 500,000 physicians across the country had bought into the system, and they were teaching them how to use the electronic medical records, that each year they had to add a few more things, a few more boxes that needed to be checked, and that data gone off to the government. And in 2016, they added the box that needed to be checked was your immunization status and that goes into what's called the the information um, the, the, the immunization information system or the local regional and district vaccine registry and your information goes into this registry to always be there and the intention of these registries are to be cradle to grave tracking of your vaccination status the national adult vaccine plan was released in february of 2015 and at the same time, they introduced an implementation plan. And some of the things that have been burbling around in the background that haven't come to the forefront yet in terms of implementation are, if you're not fully vaccinated, will you be able to travel? Will you be able to renew your driver's license? Will you be able to go to a public place like a football game or a basketball game? Will you be able to go to a grocery store unless you can show that you are fully vaccinated? That's the type of plan that's coming down the road. And I, I just see these people as just needle wheeling maniacs that every single person needs to be injected with every possible vaccine. And the adult vaccination plan actually has language in it that says that they want adults to demand and request their vaccine vaccines and if they haven't demanded and requested them that they will be offered to them they will have financial incentives to give it and it is to be required for every vaccine that's currently on the market and every vaccine in the future and we know there are at least 140 vaccines in the developmental pipeline many of these vaccines that are now in development are headed directly towards adolescents and adults and the adult vaccination plan is a five-year escalated, ramped up system to get people on board by 2020 for the implementation of the Healthy People 2020 guidelines that have become goals. They want to have 90% of the population vaccinated with flu shots, DPT shots, MMR, and all of these have, were set up initially to be guidelines, but they have become goals. And the goals now, one of the, st the steps in the goals is to take away your right to refuse. So what Healthy People 2020 is supposed to do is it's supposed to get everybody vaccinated and get everybody on board and get all the funding for adults and adolescents. And how this all kind of came about at the same time as we developed the Healthy People 2020 guidelines, it started in 2010. In 2010, it, this was declared the decade of vaccines. And in 2010, the Gates Foundation put up $10 million to start this to be the decade of vaccines. And within this decade of vaccines from 2010 to 2020, in these Healthy People guidelines, we need to have electronic medical records and tracking. We need to take away people's right to refuse. We need to uh, ramp up all of these guidelines and turn them into goals. And they are well on their way. I mean, that's really I mean, we're, all, we're at 2017, we only have three years left for people to become really aware of this and get involved in not allowing this to happen in the future. So this is really, this is something that, that, that literally affects everyone that's watching this program. Everyone, not here and around the world, because in, 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 um, in 2000, the Gates Foundation 
funded an organization called Gavi, which is the Global Alliance for Vaccination and Immunization. They started that organization with a donation of $750 million. Since that time, they have invested $6.8 billion into vaccinating the world.